how many know it's hard to live in unity? Come on, how many got in a fight with uh, your family this morning over cereal? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Never. Never, ever happens, you know. We're trying to get uh, spiritual and go to church now. Why y'all bickering and fighting and everything else over silly things like the dog or, you know, the, 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 the whatever, just silly things. And uh, there's so much division in this world. We've seen it through an entire uh, presidential election, the political side of things. Uh, there's so much u- uh, disunity, discord, uh, dishonor. There's so many things operating that even that stuff tries to get into the church, and you have churches split over silly things. Uh, back in the day, it used to be over the color of the carpet or who made the potato salad for the social after church. Now it's over masks and vaccines, and it's over uh, Democrat and Republic. You see the enemy constantly trying to cause division all throughout the earth. We see it from all the way back in the book of Genesis. Uh, we see husband and wives being divided. We see uh, children and families and brothers being divided. We see this thing of division, and we all know what divides us, but we need to begin to focus on what unites us. Come on, and a lot of times as Christians, we're known uh, for what we uh, are against instead of what we fo- what we are for. And I believe it's time that the world begins to know what we're for and not just what we're against. Because a lot of times, uh, we have sometimes not even meaning to cause more division than bringing people together. And I believe that even as we came in this place this morning, uh, I I felt over the last few days as I was praying, the Lord had uh, given me uh, actually a bunch of scriptures, and I I felt in my heart that I was going to talk about how to live in unity, how to live in unity, and what are the biblical steps for us to live in unity. And all throughout worship and even getting ready to come up here, uh, there's just been so much in my heart that God has just been speaking to me. And I begin to ask the Lord, well, Lord, I thought this is what I'm supposed to preach today, but I, I, I keep feeling the Lord quickening me in a certain area when it comes to unity. And a lot of the things that I was going to talk about today uh, does go along with uh, unity with each other and how do we walk in unity in our marriages and with our family and how do we walk in unity as the church? How do we walk in unity with the agenda of heaven and not just the agenda of man? Because you know what? Whenever, uh, Whenever I've been in the place of prayer and come up with a vision and a dream and a mission, uh, I want you to know that it's not just my mission and my dream and my vision. I want to be in unity with the heart of God for this community, for the heart of God, for the lost in this community, for the heart of God, for your family, your marriage, your children, your grandchildren, your business, your job, your ministry, whatever it is that we want to be in agreement and alignment with the heart of God. And, and, and there's a lot of things that we have to do, and there's biblical, practical things that we can do to protect unity, to fight for unity, to build unity, to grow in community. Uh, I said it last week that there is a, a, a lot of work that we have to do to grow together in community. There are things that, that we have to do that the Bible tells us, and there's a, a lot of work to be done. And, and there are things that I, were, I was even going to talk about today, but even when I came in this place before, Uh, we started worship in a time of corporate prayer this morning I kept hearing the Lord saying freedom reigns in this place freedom reigns where he is and the place of freedom is a place of unity and so this morning, I, I don't know how this is going to go or how this is going to come out. And all those scriptures that I gave you, we're probably not going to put on the screen today. But before we even get to this message that I felt like the Lord put in my heart, I, I feel the heart of God saying this morning that there's a lot of people that are scattered. There's a lot of people that are even sitting in this room right now are, that, that we are scattered. And what I mean by that is I felt the Lord speaking to my heart that, that many of us are scattered in our thoughts and our minds. Some of us feel like that we don't know which way is up right now. We don't know which way is down. We don't know if we're coming or we're going. Some of us feel like that we've been reaching and searching for a lot of things to try to pull this thing of life, this thing of our marriage, or our finances or where we're going or what's going to happen or for some of us sitting in here today you're just asking what is the next step and you're fretting over the next step and the Lord's saying the next step is the first step and the first step is to seek me with all of your heart and lean not on your own understandings in all of your ways acknowledge me and I will lead and guide and direct your path. 
So basically, what I want to say here is a lot of times that even the scattering in our life, in our personal life, we are not in unity with the heart of the Father. We're not in unity with Him. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is the place of unity is pursuing His face and not His hand. Let me say it again. The place of unity with the Father is pursuing His face that if I don't get the promotion, I don't care. If I don't get the raise, I don't care. If I don't get the new car, I don't care. If I don't get the job, I don't care. If nobody never knows me in ministry, I don't care. Because the only thing I care about is seeking your face. That God, I would rather have your face than all of your blessings because many times people get the blessings of God and forget the ways of God and their life is destroyed from the very thing that God bless them with and a lot of times we are scattered and our children are driving us nuts come on somebody Uh, you know our our marriage what is going on here and what's going on in ministry and what's going on at the church and what's going on in the government and what's going on with my taxes (laughs) come on what's going on with this and that y'all know it's tax season and, and, and what's going on with this and that? And we feel so scattered. And when we feel scattered and we're not one with Jesus and we're not one with the Father and we're not seeking and trusting in Him with all of our hearts, with everything that we have, you know what? We get distracted by tr- trying to chase our healing. We get distracted by trying to tra- ch- chase a blessing. We get distracted by trying to chase a job. We get distracted, and, and we're, 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 and this is probably so old school, I don't know if computers still do this, but you remember when you had to defrag your commute computer because everything was everywhere, and the thing just couldn't function the way it needed to function, so you put it in defrag for 24 days, it felt like that thing is still defragging. Some of us need to be on a 20, we just came out of a 21 day of prayer and fasting, but some of us need to be on a 21 day defrag, detox, getting everything out of our life, maybe we just need to Redo the fast starting tomorrow. Oh, I got to I gotta come on. <laughs> That's between you and the Lord. But can't do that right now, Lord. <laughs> I need grace to do that again. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that even the good things can just distract us from being in unity with the Father. And what happens is when we're, defra- when we're, when we're all fragmented and, and, and we're distracted and we're scattered, we have to come back to this place of oneness and this place of oneness is with Him. It is in Him that I live and I move and I have my being. It is a state of being in our life. It's something that we have to strive for. It's something that we have to fight for. And I felt in my heart, before I even go into this uh, beautiful message that I feel like the Lord gave me, before we even go there, God is wanting to do something in our individual hearts. And yes, He will do it through this message as well. But there, there has to be us getting back to the place of living and walking in unity with the Father. And that does not mean that you don't love God. That does not mean you don't tithe. That does not mean that you don't serve. There's many of us that are pastors in ministry. And we are scattered. Why? Because we're chasing numbers. We're chasing money. We're chasing fortune. We're chasing fame. We're trying to build something that many times it's not even a bad thing. uh, You know, that you want to reach the masses and the multitudes. But the main thing is to be one with Him because it is a state of being, of living in Him, moving in Him, and having our being inside of Him because outside of Him is the curse. Outside of Him is the disease. Outside of Him is sickness and torment. Outside of Him, the enemy tries to wreak havoc on our life, and many times we're trying to earn the blessings of God, work for the blessings of God, strive for the blessings of God, and what God is wanting to do is get us back into a place where we are sitting at his feet with our eyes focused on him as the scripture says looking unto Jesus the very author and finisher of our faith I know that sounds so easy and that sounds so simple and man give me a fix for this and give me a fix for that can I tell you something the only fix is Jesus Christ the only fix is the presence of God the only fix is being one with the word of the living God I want to go back really quick to where we were last week in John chapter 17 because last week when we were talking and opening up this about unity, 
uh, we shared the, the, the heart and the purpose. If you were here, if you were not here, you can go back and listen to that. And if you're a part of this church, I encourage you to. If you're not a part of this church, I encourage you to because it's the word of the Lord. And we talked about the, 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 the unity and the importance of unity. And even before Jesus was um, went uh, to the cross, he, we have this uh, prayer that John recorded in John 17, and we see the heart of Jesus. And the thing that was on the heart of Jesus was this thing of oneness and unity. Somebody shout one. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about becoming one. We're going we're gonna to talk about the, the importance of becoming one because when you are one with him, you are prepared for the glory and the presence of God. It goes back to what we were saying and have been saying even before the fast we started that God is wanting to set us in order. Because even in the book of Genesis, you see that when there was order, the glory of God came. There were also judgments that came after the glory of God came. Because when the glory comes, it begins to reveal hearts. And sometimes people tuck tail and run in the house of God. Sometimes it gets a little too hot for their fanny. Can I say that? <laughs> Sometimes it's a little too much on my toes here. What is the Lord doing? I can't really go there because if I go there, then I'm going to have to give up this or I might have to give up that. And it's not even about giving up something. It's about falling in love with Jesus till nothing else matters but Him. And everything that would hinder and defrag you, you will, uh, not defrag, anything that would cause you to be fragmented will, will cause you to want to get rid of it. Why? Because you're connected with him. And we've been talking about this thing of getting in alignment, getting in order. And uh, a lot of times as a pastor, I think of that as a whole. I think of that, Lord, how can we, how can we cultivate, how can we create a culture of oneness and unity? How many of you know to walk in unity and oneness doesn't mean you're not going to have a disagreement? It does not mean that we're always going to see eye to eye. It does not mean that everything's going to be peachy and perfect. What it means is we have to fight for unity. We have to realize, and, and we'll talk about this maybe next week, there's only one enemy. And, 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 and we got to realize that and understand that, and, and, and we'll talk about that next week. But, but, but what happens as, as a pastor, as I begin to study even what we talked about last week, that unity is so important that Jesus prayed in John 17 uh, for, for us to be one for this thing of unity. And as we talked about last week, when you look at the early church, uh, when they were in one mind and one accord and filled with the Holy Ghost, and the church began to grow because they had things in common. They, 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 were, they were meeting together. They were praying together. They were gathering around and building community around the Word of God and the presence of God. And the kingdom of God uh, began to multiply, began to escalate. And as a pastor, I, I take all those things into consideration because a lot of times that's what's in my heart. My, my heart, not a lot of times, but all the times. How can we rally together to be the greatest light for the gospel in this community? Not that a man will get credit, not that a person will get credit or a ministry will get credit, but why can't we be that city set upon a hill? I don't want to be a little bitty light that shines. I want to be a city set on a hill, shining the gospel of, of, of Jesus Christ to a community that's hurting and broken and lost, a place where people can be healed and delivered and set free, where marriages can be restored. And those are things that, that burn in my heart, and I'm trying to rally people. And sometimes I got to realize that people sitting in the pews right now are not ready to go take the heel. They're just trying to tread the water in their own personal life. And so I'm, God, God, how do I balance this thing where let's go reach the community till, hey, you know, it, it's going to be okay. Let's get your marriage healed because that's part of, my, part of my heart too. Because you know what? Hurting people hurt people, but healed people heal people. And God is calling this house to be a place that we are healed, spirit, soul, and body in every area. It is the plan and the will of God that we would prosper and be in health even as our soul, mind, will, and emotion prosper. And what happens many times, we are so scattered, we're not walking in the presence of God into a, into a place and a level that God wants us to walk in. Why? Because we're not really in unity with Him. It doesn't mean God don't love you, and it doesn't mean you don't love God. 
I got out of unity with God this morning. I got out of unity with my wife on our trip to Florida when we we're supposed to be celebrating 18 years. I had to line her back up in unity. <laughs> Is it not true? Shout amen. So I had to go to Walt Disney World. I'm standing here waiting on rides, so I'm Googling, what's the net income of this place for a year? $6.8 billion net, not gross net. And I'm like, man, these people, it's pockets them some money. They charge me $20, $35 just to park my car. Anyway, I was just, <laughs> we had a great anniversary, though. <laughs> we really did. <laughs> so we're in line for this ride. Whoopee. Rise of resistance. I'm about to resist something, <laughs> I'm telling you. Star Wars Rise of Resistance. All you movie buffs, I don't watch it, so don't hate me or shout me down. We can still walk in unity if I don't like Star Wars Rise of Resistance. We still do it, don't we? It's about having one heart. But anyway, so I'm standing in line, and they got this little thing that tells you how long your wait is. 120 minutes. Do the math. That's two hours, right? <laughs> 60 plus 60 is 120. 60 times 2 is 120. I'm trying to do this math. I'm like, can we divide this? Can we break it down? Pi R square, something, I don't know, to the second power, whatever. So we stand in line for an hour and 20 minutes, two hours. We get right up to where you get on the line, and they come over the intercom and said, our ride is temporarily post, what do they say? I don't know. I was mad. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? <laughs> delayed. Temporary delayed. After two hours, we're like, hey, can you give us a free ticket to get back in at the beginning? No, we don't do that. Well, you need to revise your policies. That's what I wanted to say. But anyway, we were standing there, and she started getting upset, and I started being calm. <laughs> And she's like, forget this. We got to get out of here. We got to go. We got to get out of here. I'm not standing here. And me and her got in an argument because I said, I've stand here for 120 minutes. I will stand here another 120 minutes. I am not moving. I will not be moved. You will not leave. We are not going anywhere. And she's, we going out. I said, no, we are not. We are getting in unity on this thing. And we are standing here. We will not be moved. I see. there's the door right there to get into this ride. It was in this, they take you through all these lines and all these caves and all this kind of stuff. And you get there and there's this door that opens. You go in, they get you ready for your experience or whatever. And I said, you know what? So, how many times we go back and forth? A few times. But man, I stood my ground. I am not leaving. You can walk away if you want to walk away. I'm not leaving. So anyway, it took, what, another... Another 20 minutes. So two hours and 20 minutes. Don't you ever ask me if it's worth it. <laughs> anyway, how did I get off on that? Unity. unity. Got to fight. So there's always this disunity that tries to come in. There's this division that tries to come in. But what I want to say this morning is before... We begin to focus on unity anywhere else. And I, I, I said this a little bit last week. We've got to get unity in here. We've got to get our mind and our heart in unity with this right here. If you are fragmented this morning, if you are dealing with fear, if you're dealing with worry, if you're dealing with anxiety, God is for you. But what God is wanting you to do is get in a place of unity with his word and his promise. Because when you get in a place of unity and you begin to get unity right in here, the things out here will begin to take care of themselves. When we begin to get in unity with the word and the will of God, when we begin to get in unity with the promises of God and the principles of God in our life, when we begin to become one with him as he is with the Father, when we get in this place of unity, there is supernatural power for our life. There is supernatural healing. I'm here to tell you that when you get in agreement with the promises of God, that God has not given you a spirit 
spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind, and you get into unity with that, and you begin to agree with that, you begin to speak that, you begin to walk in that, no matter how you fear, feel, I'm here to tell you, fear will bow. Fear will leave. But you know what happens? The enemy will say, well, that didn't work, and you prayed that, and the pastor prayed for you, and you got oil rubbed on you, and everything else, and they laid hands on you, and they anointed you, but nothing isn't working. That is the lie of the enemy to try to get you out of agreement and unity with the word and the will of God in your life. Because when your mind and my mind and our hearts are one with him, when Jesus prayed this prayer, when he prayed for his disciples, I want to read this again really quick in John 17 verse 6. It says, I've manifested your name. This is Jesus praying to his father. He said, I've manifested your name to the men whom you've given to me. Out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known all things which you have given to me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given to me. How many know his words are life? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that his word is life, they're health to all of our flesh. I don't have anything against medication. I just want to make that clear. I don't have anything against medication. I don't have anything against doctors. I don't have anything against medical science. I, I, I don't believe it's perfect. I, don't, I believe that you can take one thing, and if you need to take one thing, it may give you 15 other things. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just the way it is. And I don't have anything against modern medicine or anything like that. If I need some medicine, I will take some medicine. But can I tell you what we have failed to do as the body of Christ is realize that his word is medicine. It is health to all of our flesh according to Proverbs. And the pill that we need to take every day, listen, if you have to take a pill, you have to take a pill. It doesn't mean you have a lack of faith. Can I go ahead and say that? It doesn't mean that God doesn't care about you and you don't have enough faith for this or have enough faith for that. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God according to Romans 10, 17. And what we have to do is take our medicine daily and the medicine is the Word of God. So if you've got a fear problem you need to get you a prescription from the Word of God that is what God says about fear, and fear cannot have any hold on you. And you know what we need to do is every day we need to take our medicine, because how many know that when you're on medicine, when you take the first pill, a lot of times it don't help you. Some of us are on pills for the rest of our life that the doctors have told us that we will have to do. You have to keep on keeping on taking your medicine. And when you take your medicine every day, you are putting the Word of God in your your heart, in your mouth to speak it out. You are continually putting it in and you've got to give the word time to work because the word will work if you will work the word. But a lot of people don't want to work the word. They just want a quick hit and a quick this and a quick that. But there is a spiritual war that is going on that every time the word comes into your heart, it is a seed and a seed has to be watered. It has to be nurtured to grow in your life. And when the seed of the Word of God comes in, my Bible tells me, according to the words of Jesus, that the enemy comes immediately to try to steal that seed and tell you, you know what? That ain't working and that didn't work and that's passed away and the apostles this and homie did that and, and Johnny did this and all these things. Y'all don't ever hear homie in your mind sometimes. <laughs> and the seed... It's the Word of God. It is medicine to all of our flesh. And listen, it is supernatural. And what happens is when we get in order, we get our minds in order with what? With the pastor, with the, with the organization, with the denomination. No, no. When we get our minds and our hearts in order, in, line, in alignment with the Word of God, and we work the Word every day. When my mother was in the hospital... Listen, I know, that, I know that some people that I know that are strong in faith believe God. Their in outcome did not come out the way my outcome came. And I don't know why. And it doesn't mean I'm spiritual, more spiritual or they're less spiritual or anything like that. I, I, I don't have all the answers. But can I tell you something? When my mother was in ICU for 14 days on a ventilator, could not breathe on her own. I, every day I would get up and declare the word of God. And it seemed like nothing was happening 
and you begin to get weary and you begin to get tired and you say, well, I guess maybe this is just the will of God. I guess I don't know God's thoughts and I don't know His heart and I, His ways are not my ways and they're so much higher. And we say things like, I guess God needed another angel. God didn't need another angel. Come on now, I'm sorry, but God didn't need another angel. He don't need another angel. And, 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 and there's all these things that go through our mind to get us to believe a certain thing. And there, as I even said in the beginning, there are some outcomes that came out different than my outcome. I can't, I can't, I can't explain that. My outcome could have possibly came out different. Would I still be declaring the word of God today? Absolutely, I would still be declaring the word of God today. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but his words by no means shall pass away. And so I would get up every day and I would declare the word of God and I would see nothing happening. And you begin to get weary and you begin to question, well, maybe God needs an, another angel. Maybe this, maybe that. Just all those things that we try to reason. And I would have to find myself going back to what does the word of the living God say? And I would get scriptures like death and life are in the power of your tongue. I would get scriptures like God, God defeated the spirit of death, hell, and the grave. I would, I, I, I would get uh, uh, scriptures like, by his stripes you were healed. I, I, I would get scriptures like, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in his name. And I would begin to work that word again, work that word again, speak that word again, pray that word again, prophesy that word again. Because when you get in order, if I wasn't doing that, I would be out of order doesn't mean I wouldn't go to heaven. It wouldn't mean that God doesn't love me. It wouldn't mean that God didn't have a plan and a purpose for my, my life. But what it would mean is that I would be ignorant of the word of God. And I would not be building faith in the word, the medicine that God has given us. His word is health to all of our flesh and healing to all of our bones. We have to constantly declare and speak the word. Live in the word. Walk in the word. Be one with the word. Jesus, when he was praying here, he said, For I've given them your words which you have given me, and they have received them. We have to receive the word. You know, it's hard for some people to receive the word because of what we've been taught all of our life. Sometimes it's hard because of, and, and this is not against a denomination. Hey, sometimes in non-denominations, we get in our boxes. We get in our religious things, and non-denomination becomes a denomination. So, so I'm not against denominations, and I, I don't mean to say anything bad about denominations because I can throw myself in the denomination because I'm non-denomination, which has become almost a denomination. So we all need the light of the gospel, and Jesus said the truth is what will make you free. And man can err. A man can take, take scriptures out of context. We can do certain things. We can believe certain things from history that may or may not be true. And what happens many times is we get locked into what we believe is the truth. And what we believe, the lie, when we believe the lie, we live the lie. And we never walk in the fullness that God has for us. But I'm here to tell you that in the last days, which I believe that we're in, God is raising up a people. God is raising up sons and daughters that will manifest the presence and the glory of God. God is raising up houses of worship that will go out and demonstrate signs and wonders and miracles. And what we have to do is begin to get in oneness with the Lord, oneness with His Word. We have to receive the gospel and the Word of God, not through a filter, not through a box, not through an, an experience that we had in a church service. We have to receive the Word of God in our our secret place with the Lord and allow the spirit of revelation to operate in our life to open up our eyes to walk in the truth because the truth will make you free. It is being in unity, agreeing with the truth, living in the truth. And he said this, they have received your words. He said, for I have given them your words which you have given me and they have received them. Somebody shall I receive and have known surely that I came forth from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you've given me, for they are yours. Verse 10. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I have come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you've given me, that they may be one. Shout one. They may be one as we are one. Now, if you want 
heaven in your marriage, if you want heaven in your body, if you want heaven upon your finances, if you want the blessings of God and the presence of God, we've got to learn to walk in oneness with God. Not what the church is doing, the pastor's doing, not what the worship team is doing. Oh man, if that worship team would just do this, if that youth ministry would just do this, if that children's ministry would just do this, if them ushers, man, if that sound man would just do this, on and on and on. We're always looking at what everybody else should do to make everything better so the Lord can work and move. But no, we've got to get back to looking inward and getting our inward heart right with God and in unity with God and in the place of, uh, of order and alignment with God because we when we get into the place of alignment in our own life, you will have the glory of God, the presence of God, the hand of God, the face of God on your marriage. You will have it on your children. You will have it. There is no limit. There is no, there is no, how do I say this? There, the, God can do anything in all things. And he's not just delegated to a few people or a few people there. No, he's omnipresent. He is always there. He is a very present help in time of need but what happens is we get scattered we're chasing things and chasing stuff and we have to come back into oneness and alignment with the Lord because when we do that's where the glory of God is poured out it goes all the way back to the book of Genesis in, let, let me just turn there in Genesis chapter 1 we all, we all know the scripture we all probably could quote it in the beginning in the very beginning in the very beginning, there was, there was chaos and division. There was, the, the earth was without form. It was void. How many does that feel like some of our marriages, some of our lives, some of our churches, some of our ministries? Like, God, where are you? Well, he's just waiting on us to get in alignment with him. He's just waiting on us to get in agreement with him. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form. It was void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was just hovering over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was there. When you look at the Trinity, when you begin to talk about unity, you look at the Trinity. It is God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the three in one. They work together. They live together. They are the same yet different. It is, it is magnificent. It is indescribable almost. They, they, he is the Trinity God. He is the triune God. There is a union between the three. And there was, there was chaos and there was... Vo the, the, the earth was without form. It was, it, was, it was void. But the Spirit of God was just waiting for the Word of God to be spoken. And there was a unity that happened that caused supernatural things to happen. Listen, I say this with all humility, and I say this to inspire you and to encourage you. That no matter what the doctor has told you, God is greater. I, I, I say this with, 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 with humility and I, I, I say this to inspire you that no matter how far you feel like your life is gone and your marriage is gone, if you too will get in agreement with God, not even with each other right now, you will get in agreement with the Word of God. You say, how do I get in agreement with, with God? You find out what His Word says about marriage. You find out what His Word says about divorce. You find out what His Word says about finances. You find out what His Word says about, uh, about depression, about sickness and disease. You find out what His Word says... And you, no matter what you feel, no matter the reports you are getting, no matter what's happening in your life, that you get in agreement and get in unity with the Word of God and get in order, there begins to be a divine release of the presence and power of God in your life. He can heal anything. He can grow anything. He can cause anything that's dead to come back alive. He can do the impossible. But what, what it's going to take is us staying and living in unity with God. Living in unity with His Word. Realizing that when you begin to press forward, you've got to keep pressing. And there may be days that you get up and you feel like, God, where are you? you got to do it again. There may be days that you get up and your feelings are, are trying to disunify and cause division with you in the word of God. You've got to get up and you've got to get that word and speak that word and declare that word. You've got to realize that there is authority in the word of the living God and if you will live in unity with it, things will begin to change in your life, in your marriage, in your health, in your finances. They will begin to change. But it takes it a step further. It says, don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer. 
Well, I've been, I've, been, I've been speaking that over my finances all my life, yet you're greedy. Well, I did that. I spoke that. I tried that. No. Not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. In the book of Genesis, the glory of God was poured out. God created man. He created woman. He created a garden where man and woman could walk with God and talk with God in the cool of the day. See, that's what we've got to understand and have the revelation that if we're going to walk in union with God, if we're going to be one, as Jesus prayed, that we would be one with each other, we first got to be one with Him. And when we are one with Him, we've got to realize that, that you know, God created us not just to worship Him. I know a lot of people say, God created us to worship Him. Yes, He did. God created, God created us because God is love and He needed somebody to love. I've heard all those things and I, I, I'm not, not saying that's not true, but you know what? When you go back to the very book of the beginning and you see what God created, God created us to be with Him. God created us to live in an environment that's not toxic. God created us to live in an environment that's not full of sickness and disease and everything else. But you know what? The enemy messed that up. We allowed the enemy in, separated us from God, and, and, and we were separated from God. They were kicked out of the garden. And, and the original intention for me and you is not to be a pastor. Yes, God calls pastors. I believe I'm a God-called pastor. Not to write the greatest, latest hit. Not to have the greatest, biggest ministry, or have the greatest, biggest business. All that is a part of the plan of God. But what God really created us to do is to be in His presence. And that's the only place that we thrive is when we live and we walk in the presence of God. And when we do and when we get in unity, His presence begins to flow. Power, power, wonder-working power. Begins to cause things that be not as though they were. And we see in Genesis this thing of unity. And man was thrown out of the garden and separated from the presence of God. And God sent Jesus to the earth. He was the word made flesh. He lived and he dwelt among us. i got to finish this up. He lived and he dwelt among us. He tore the veil of the temple in two, giving us access to the Holy of Holies every single day. No matter what we feel, no matter what we see, we have access. It is up to us whether we access. It is up to us whether we choose to walk in union with God and to begin to become one in God, to pursue His face and to pursue His heart because that is the key to everything we're looking for. His presence is the key to fulfillment. His presence is the key to the breakthrough. If we think, man, if I just had that job, God will give you that job. Man, if I just had this, if I just had that. No, we can't be defragmented. We can't be uh, or fragmented. We can't be scattered. We've got to get back to this oneness, one mind, one accord with the will of God. And many times we say, you know what? Well, I tried that and that don't work. There is a spiritual war that is going on for the word of God. I'm reminded in Daniel chapter 10 when Daniel prayed the prophecies for Persia and all the things that were happening and the things that... The prophecies that were concerning Persia and, and Greece and the things that were going on in Daniel's day. and I'm reminded of Daniel chapter 10, verse 10. It says, suddenly a hand touched me which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For I have known, for I... for." For I have now been sent to you while he was speaking this word to me. I stood and I trembled. Then he said to me, do not fear. Do not fear. Somebody needs to do not fear. He said, do not fear, Daniel. From the first day that you set your heart to understand, understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of your words. He said, I have come because of your words. Your words, and let me say it like this, when your words are in unity with the word. 
Oh, you got to catch this. When your words, the words that are speaking out of your mouth, are in unity and in agreement with the word of God and the word of heaven, when the medicine of heaven, when you speak the word and your word is in agreement with the word, he is watching over that word to perform it. And we have to continually make sure that our mouth is in agreement with the heart of God. It, you know, it frustrated me, especially when I was a youth pastor, and I'd see people walking around the church, and they say, man, them teenagers going to bust hell wide open. Man, can you believe them teenagers? They just are loud music. They pull up in their cars. Their pants hanging down. They got this. They got a tattoo. They got a, all this kind of stuff. It would frustrate me, and you know how kind I am. Uh, y'all know how kind I am? Y'all know how kind I am, but I'm telling you, I want to go stone cold or something. You know what I mean? I want to pull out my wrestling moves and everything else and be like, you know what? What? We are pouring our life into these teenagers, and you're going to walk around and speak things over them that God is not speaking over them. God is speaking life. God is speaking healing. God is speaking breakthrough. Can't you see past the natural and begin to speak? And what we have to do as individuals to get out of this place of being scattered is we've got to not go by what we feel and what we see, but we've got to get in alignment with the Word and the will of God in our life. God is no respecter of persons. It does not matter your economical status. It does not matter your bank account. It does not matter how many scriptures you do or you don't know right now. God is no respecter of persons. He will bring restoration in your life. He will cause old things to pass away and behold all things to become new. But let me tell you something. It's not just you praying one prayer and poof it happening. You're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to be in the house of God. You're going to have to be planted. you got to come to a small group. you got to show up for a prayer meeting. you got to get up on a Monday morning when you feel like cussing your boss out and you got to meditate on scripture all the way to work. And then when you get to work, you meditate on scripture all day long. And when you got to take a call from a crazy client, after you get off that call, you pray for them in the name of Jesus. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You've got to put in the work and work the word. And I'm here to tell you, if you will work the word and in 90 days, you will not believe what God does. If you will work the word, if you are flat broke right now, but you will get a hold of the promises of God about your finances, and you will work the word, and you will get in covenant with God with your finances, in 90 days, you won't even recognize what is going on. You will be blown away by the faithfulness and the goodness of God, because we ain't waiting on God. God is waiting on us to get in alignment and get in unity unity with him. And listen, what happens is when we get healed, this community better look out. The devil better be going ahead and packing up his bags right now because signs, wonders, and miracles are going to flow through the sons and the daughters of God. And I'm just here to say today, let's get in oneness. Let's get in oneness with the king. Let's get in a place of unity with him and allow him to prosper us, spirit, soul, and body so that we can see his kingdom come come and his will be done. So what you got to do as I close this today is that you may be dealing with oppression. You may be dealing with depression. You may de be, be dealing with a bad doctor's report. You may be dealing with a, a spouse that needs to get in alignment. You may, you, may be, you may need to be dealing with a bad boss. You may be dealing, I don't know. God knows exactly what's going on in your life. And you may feel so scattered. The Lord is saying, come unto me. Come unto me, all you who are burdensome. Some of us are so burdened down, we couldn't even worship this morning. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I come up here, I, 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 I can't open my eyes. I, I, I can't open my eyes because I'm like, Lord, I just, I just want to open my eyes. And sometimes I feel like the Lord is like, just don't even open your eyes. And sometimes I do open my eyes and I see, I, I just see heaviness sitting on people that are just, they're just, they, they just can't worship. And sometimes people say, well, that's not my personality. Well, let me throw, we don't handle snakes up in here, but let me throw a snake on you and see if you don't go, ah! <laughs> Something's moving. Something's changing. Ooh, heaven. Like when you 
encounter God, not only when you encounter God, but even when you have heaviness and things on your life, some of us can't even worship God because of our circumstances and our feelings. And your worship unto God is the very breakthrough that's going to get you in alignment with heaven. I'm here to tell you that, that faith is the highest, one of the highest forms of faith is praising God even when my bank account's busted, even when my marriage is falling apart, even when the doctor doesn't give me uh, any good news, one of the highest forms of faith and trust in God is lifting up our voice and saying, Jesus, you are worthy of it all. But we're so scattered, we can't worship. We say, well, that's not really my personality, and I'm not asking people to worship like I worship or worship like any other, everybody else worships, and sometimes people worship so deeper that don't even, that don't even jump or twirl or dance. Sometimes that can be a fake and that can be a phony for somebody trying to get attention. I understand that. And sometimes we use that as an excuse not to do what God has told us to do. Well, they just want attention. I don't want somebody to think I'm getting attention. Why are you worried about what everybody else is thinking when it should be an audience of one? Because those are just plots and plans of the enemy to keep us from releasing our worship and praise unto God and getting into a place of unity because when we are in that place of unity, the glory of God begins to move like we've never seen move, move before. And I believe for some of us this morning, I know that we're just trying to tread water in our own homes, in our own life. But can I tell you something? If you will get... You, listen, you don't even... You don't even have to come to this church. You find a church that preaches the gospel. You find a church that does not compromise the word of God. You, you find a church that their values is the presence of the Lord. Their core value is the, is the Holy Spirit moving. Their core value is the word of God. Their core value is prayer and pressing into the Lord. You find a place of soil that you can get planted in. And if you will get planted in there right now, you feel like, oh, everything is falling apart. I, I, I don't know why I keep feeling this up in my heart, but if you will 90 days go after it with everything you've got, you will get planted in the fertile soil of the Lord. Some of you are going to be in the streets. Right now you feel like you don't know which way is up, but in 90 days you're going to be prophesying and testifying in the streets. You're going to be one of the greatest individuals that says, we're going to take this community for the kingdom because I remember where I was 90 days ago, and if we can just break somebody out of this rut... If we can just get a little stir, faith stirred up in them and get them in the Word of God, planted in the Word, planted in the house of the Lord, Jesus changes everything. I know for some of us this morning, the vision doesn't go past our pain. I know for some of us this morning, the vision does not go past our pain, but you are in a house that is bursting with vision. You are in a house of leaders that are bursting with vision. You are in a house of, of, of people that, that the vision and the mission is more of Him and less of us, that the purpose is to do things that please the Father, that cause Him to come and see His kingdom come and cause the, the, the enemy to be scattered because God is rising in everything that we do. But you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to put in the work. You can't blame a pastor. You can't blame an ex-husband, an ex-wife. You can't blame a child. You can't blame the government. You can't blame anybody. There are no more excuses. God is done with excuses. God is finished with excuses. Well, I didn't get but a third grade education. God is done with excuses. Well, they didn't recognize my gift. God is done with excuses. Well, they ain't got nobody, they ain't got nobody that talked to me. God is done with excuses because if nobody else talks to you, God will talk to you. Come on, somebody. Well, they ain't got an old folks ministry. God is done with excuses. Well, they ain't got a food pantry. God is done with excuses. Well, they ain't got this. God is done with excuses. He is looking for a people that will get in oneness with Him. And that we will no longer be tossed to and fro and scattered about with every little whisper that comes in our ear, that comes through the news, that comes through 
the government that comes through our friends, that comes through our enemies. No. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are God's own special people. I challenge you to live like it, to love like it, to walk like it, to be like it, even though everything may not be perfect and in order. You have control over you. No one else. I have control over me. Don't give the doctor control over you. I know we go under the care of the doctor. I I understand that. I'm not against that. If you need that, you need that. But I'm just saying, do you believe he has the final say? Do you believe he has the final say? Because everything in this life will try to get us out of unity with this. Why? Because the enemy, even Jesus said it, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But listen up. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Hey, I've set before you blessing and cursing. You choose who you want to be in agreement with. And I just believe today God is calling for a people that will get in agreement with his word and walk in agreement with his word until we see heaven begin to melt everything else that's not of God. You are a special people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation.